This videotape documents the Group Immersive Visualization Environment, or GIV, an experiment using a planetarium as an environment for a new type of informal science education. GIV is a major component of a large-scale collaborative educational program on biology titled Journey into the Living Cell. The collaborative team consisted of artists, biologists, educators, computer scientists, and Carnegie Science Center professionals. It was created in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and involved cooperation with similar personnel across the globe. It received the largest National Science Foundation grant for informal science education to date. GIVE is a synthesis of new visualization and sound technologies created by artists and scientists at Carnegie Mellon University and new applications of existing interactive and planetarium technologies. The GIVE environment is composed of three elements. One, the full surround viewing space of the planetarium, two, chromatech glasses utilizing color diffraction and refraction to produce 3D depths in each image, and lastly, a system of linked technologies providing graphics and sound to respond to audience involvement. This system uses an infrared camera located at the front of the planetarium, which detects audience members as they hold up reflective paddles and sends this signal to a unit called Cinematrix. The Cinematrix processes the number and locations of paddles at 30 times per second. This information is sent to a silicon graphics computer, which uses this collective audience response, almost like that of a joystick or mouse, to control graphics simulations. These graphics are projected before the audience. This computer also sends information to a Macintosh computer which controls full surround sound so that sound comes from the same place as the graphics within the dome space. The four interactive scenarios shown are designed to be fun and educational and reinforce main concepts in the Journey into the Living Cell show. During this interactive lesson in scale, audience members control a slider on a long scale bar showing various systems ranging in size from atom to galaxy. The audience must position the slider to approximate the location of the cell relative to other systems. By holding up paddles, the audience members increase the velocity at which the slider moves up the scale, and by holding the paddles down, increases the velocity down the scale. Thus, speed and direction of the slider's movement is an average of the audience's activity. When audience members hold up paddles, ions mapped to their seats enter through the membrane into the simulated cell, and holding paddles down sends them back out. The audience attempts to achieve a state of equilibrium to create a healthy cell into which we will soon be traveling. This scenario highlights an interesting phenomena we have observed of spontaneous cooperation. These audiences seem to easily consolidate their efforts to achieve correct concentrations. Tilt box mazes, pinball machines, and flight simulators were important conceptual models used during the development of the protein synthesis maze. The audience is engaged in moving an ingested macromolecule to all the different organelles involved in each phase of protein synthesis. One side of the audience controls up and down movement of the particle, while the other side controls left and right movement. Each organelle emits sounds analogous to its function. For example, the nucleus sounds like busy offices within City Hall. The sound space is mapped so that larger, closer organelles are loudest and so that sound emanates from the correct location of the dome. The final interaction within the show had dual objectives, to reinforce understanding of ATP synthesis within the mitochondria and to excite the audience for the grand finale of the show. The audience runs sugar and oxygen pumps used within the mitochondria to produce ATP, the energy currency of the cell. The faster they move their paddles, the more ATP is produced and the faster the figure runs around the mitochondria track. The mitochondria at center screen, like much of the show's imagery, was rendered in 3D from an actual scientific data set. All of these interactions were interspersed throughout the 45 minutes during into the living cell show, like laboratory classes in science curricula, breaking the linear narrative at key points, allowing audiences to actively learn fundamental concepts.